Um, next up uh, is um, Ihan Anabosi. Uh, hi. hi. Um, he's going to be talking about innovative solutions to improve fish health in aquaculture from diagnostics to vaccines. Um, so Ihan, if you're ready, you can go ahead and share the screen. Yeah. Can you can you see my screen? Uh, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. I just found it. Hi everyone, um, I'm here actually with the Tiwi Wang and uh, I hope you find this talk interesting and we will be happy to take questions at the end. The presentation will give you an overview of our technologies and some of the innovative solutions that we are offering to overcome challenges facing the aquaculture sector. This slide actually shows uh, a wide range of technologies and expertise that we have developed and all of these are tuned to provide support and service to the sector and uh, here I would like to acknowledge the parafish control actually because most of these technologies and expansion have come as a result of us joining this project and learning from the experts in the area so we have uh, found the gaps and the bottlenecks and we try to make solutions. Our First technology I'm going to talk about is actually our antibody production unit. All you need to know here is that we have a, a robust technology that utilizes short synthetic peptides. And uh, it is believed to be the shortest immunogen currently in use. This approach offers a high degree of specificity. Uh, and as you can see in this example, even tiny changes can be detected by antibodies developed in this method even a single amino acid change can be detected using this approach. Importantly, this approach is time and cost effective and can be integrated into high throughput assays. There is also a very significant, significant advantage of using this approach, which I will come to later. Actually, use, sorry, I just go back to this. Using this approach, we have generated several antibodies for the Parafish Control Project partners, uh, unfortunately, I can't show you the data because it's not published, but hopefully soon you will get to see them and you can see the, the, the great work and the great technology we have. But, you know, having actually joined the uh, Parafish Control, we realized that there is um, a, a shortage of high quality reagents in the sector. And because of that, we began developing and generating antibodies for a panel of commercial fish species. For example, we developed antibodies to emerging pathogens such as tilapia lake virus uh, to ensure appropriate diagnostic platforms are in place. We also developed antibodies to key immune markers and key health markers to uh, support, uh, uh, to provide monitoring tools for vaccines, efficacy, adjuvants, stimulants, and also to chart the fish robustness. Also, we actually developed antibodies for basic research. All these antibodies and these products will be available for the scientific community. I would like now to move on to a software development. If you recall earlier, I described several advantages of using peptide technologies to generate antibodies. There is one significant advantage is that if you develop a lot of antibodies, at some point you will have um, some kind of correlation between amino acid sequences, certain parameters, and immunogenicity scores. And this pattern can be actually converted into an algorithm that can be used to predict ant antigenicity. And this is actually what we did. We developed a software with a machine learning capability to predict antigenic regions. The software has multiple algorithms integrated into it, which I, I don't have time to explain, but the key algorithm is called the genetic algorithm incorporated to speed up the optimization process. This algorithm will suggest hybrid and crossovers uh, peptides to be tested in the lab. For instance, here it will, it will suggest it, it, um, it make a hybrid of peptide one and peptide two, both highly antigenic. What will happen? If these both are, if these peptides are, are made into hybrid, is there a synergistic effect, or is there no effect? Similarly, what happens if there are antigenic peptides made hybrid with neutral peptides? 
which one is a dominant, which one is a recessive. Such data is very important because it will refine the software prediction accuracy and enable us to actually begin to manipulate the immune response. Obvious applications for the software includes in silico, in silico immunogenicity mapping, diagnostic design, and vaccine design. Those two are more relevant for this talk. So I'm gonna talk about the diagnostic design. This is a, an, an innovative approach because a pathogen proteins can be analyzed by the software, which will rank the proteins based on antigenicity. And there is another software integrated into this program that will actually identify the key antigenic regions, which can be cloned into a vector and expressed to be used for detection of, of infection. Similarly, this approach can be can, has the potential to actually develop diagnostics for multi-pathogens or multiple strains, seven to eight at once, maybe even 10, providing a cost-effective option for the fish disease management. Similarly, the software can be employed to predict vaccine subunits and highly antigenic uh, uh, subunits are identified in silico, which then can be created can be developed into a composite antigen, which is used as, the anti as a vaccine. Similarly, multivalent vaccines can be developed using this approach. Adjuvants, adjuvants can be tagged to improve the efficacy of the vaccine, but also to be used as a, as a, uh, is used to assess the vaccine performance. As you can see from this work, key step in our innovative approach is the recombinant production, which leads me to my next topic, the importance of establishing a recombinant service for the sector. And recognizing the urgent need for such service, Tiwi Wang has established a recombinant division. We offer multiple services, including biomodeling and bioengineering. And just the case with antibodies, the industry is starved of novel innovative biologicals. And this is where we stepped in. We have generated a panel of over 30 reactive, bioreactive flagellins to a broad range of bacterial species. These are some examples here highlighted. We have also developed active biologics to the key cytokines and health markers for most of the commercial fish species. All of these products will be available for research. And we didn't stop at that. We tested the new products and demonstrated their uh, bioactivities compared to conventional stimulants and adjuvants. For instance, as you can see in these graphs, flagellants have emerged as the most potent immune modulators. Even at the picogram levels, they have a huge response or effect on the immune system. From our data, and we didn't show you everything here, you are looking at a future protein adjuvants and a few future feed additives. Flagellants could also be uh, an important, could have an important impact on shrimp farm management in case such products prove to boost the shrimp immunity. It is also worth noting that we have also bioengineered some of these flagellants and cytokines to increase their potency, improve their stability, and the early data is very promising. Just to summarize, we have developed novel biologicals and made them available to the stakeholders. In addition, we provide custom services to our close collaborators. We have also developed innovative AI softwares to assist diagnostic and vaccine designs. And finally, we have generated a panel of products could become future adjuvants and immune stimulants, which is ready for testing. Thank you very much for all the, the help we had in this project and uh, everyone in the partners, uh, in, in the, in the uh, Barrafish Control partners. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, I am. Um, and thanks I'm to happy you. to take questions at the end. Uh, yes, uh, and as a reminder, um, people are encouraged to uh, submit any questions they have to the Q 